Hey, what's up? I'm Nico, and today's video is about the Leap Motion Controller, this thing here. So this is basically a camera, even though it doesn't really look like one. It's a depth camera. So beyond just seeing shape and color, it also sees depth. And through that, it can distinguish between something that's large and far away from something that's you know small and close by. If you're familiar at all with the Xbox and the Kinect, this is essentially the same thing, only that its vision tracking is tailored to recognize you know the shape of a human hand rather than a whole body. This thing has been around for about five years. I've had it since then. And since then, it, the hardware itself hasn't really changed. What has changed is how people have been using it. A very interesting use of this has been for virtual reality. Because, um, you know, one of the biggest problems with virtual reality is that once you, you step into a virtual world and you can see your own hands, that really breaks the illusion quite a lot. So if you attach this to your forehead, um, to you know the headset, you'll always be able to see your hands. Your hands will kind of cease to exist when you look away, but at least it keeps the illusion quite you know quite strongly. They've recently been doing some pretty amazing things with augmented reality, and yeah, that looks really cool. But yeah, I don't have a virtual reality headset or augmented reality headset, so I'll just use this on a desktop. And you'll see, there's still plenty you can do with this to make music. Maybe one of the most obvious things you can do with this is to create a theremin. So here's my take on a theremin with a few added bonuses. I call these two instruments Wii and Wub Wub for reasons that will appear quite obvious now. Here's Wii. And now here's Wub Wub. This thing can tell apart one hand from the other, so my right hand triggers Wii, and my left hand triggers Wub Wub. One thing that makes both Wii and Wub Wub a bit more musically usable is that even though, like with a real theremin, you're sliding through all possible notes and in-betweens, you can't really stay in an in-between note. You tend to be dragged to a real note every time. You can't really do intermediate notes for a sustained amount of time. You can even tailor this so that it can only do notes that belong to a specific scale or even to a specific arpeggio. In that way, even if you might not know the note you're really playing, you will always be playing in key. That makes it a lot more fun to play, even though you don't know what the hell you're really doing. One thing you'll notice about all of these little projects is that this thing is meant to be interacted with in a very unprecise way. I'm not, you know, pinpointing a specific point in space because you don't really have much feedback about where your hand is in precise terms about this device. You can see, you know, something on the computer screen, but that only happens after you've actually put your hand on a specific place. And when you're dealing with music, you don't really have much space for errors or correcting mistakes because everything happens in real time. That's one of the things I love about, you know, designing interaction for music because everything needs to be immediate and in real time. And there isn't any space for abstracting away and taking your time to click through a series of, you know, panels to get somewhere, you need to be able to get right to the point. Yes, a theremin, for example, does rely on you being extremely precise about, you know, a note being at a very specific point in space, and you need to have really good muscle memory, but that takes years of practice, and that's not what I wanted to do with this. I wanted to do something that would be instantly engaging and just fun for anyone, even someone who doesn't really know about notes and scales. Now here's something entirely different. This now is a piano. So if I lower any of my fingers at more than a certain speed, this is perceived as playing a note. It doesn't matter if I do it down here or up here. It doesn't matter if I move my whole hand rather than just one finger. If I go more to the left, it's lower notes. If I go more to the right, it's higher notes. I'm going to use both hands. And one of the reasons why this sort of works is that I am only able to play notes within the E minor scale. So even though I have no idea where my hands are, they will always sound in key. 
You can take this same idea a step further, and now instead of being limited to just a scale, you're limited to arpeggios that belong to one chord. And that chord is the last note played by the guitar, so... kind of shows the idea. And now for my final act, this is the most bizarre of all of these. This uses a recording of my own voice saying the words, thanks for watching, please subscribe. But I'm free to explore this audio sample in various ways by moving my hand over the sensor. Thanks for watching, please subscribe. Yeah, thanks for watching. It was